Hey y'all. So, I you know it's been a while since I've recorded. It's been a crazy couple of weeks, so. Um, so let me see, where was I? Um, the fallout after the call with my dad. Um, let's see. So, that happened in June on Father's Day. So, um, it went July, August, September, uh, July, August, September, October with no contact with uh, my father um, or my mother. Um, so uh, we live real close, maybe five minutes away from each other. And, um, we all do. My, my sister lives within 20 minutes of me. My brother lived within, you know, maybe 15 minutes of me. My mom, five minutes. So we all lived relatively in like a close circle. Um, I found out from, um, friends that my mother sold her house and moved. She was telling friends that she was moving to downsize her house. Um, but I have friends that are realtors, so, uh, when I looked up the house that she was moving to, it wasn't a downsize. Uh, she was moving to a gated community, and she was just moving to not be close to me, I believe, I believe, and to get away from the circle of friends that we, me and her had created, because I basically had told um, a lot of people um, what her and my dad had done, what they had said to my kids. I told them everything. Um, nobody cared about, um, you know, about the biological father aspect. They cared about how she had, you know, supposedly stood by why my father had said those horrific hurtful things to my daughter. Almost all of them knew my daughter. Um, so, um, it was just awful. They, uh, she believed they were all looking at her funny because, and talking about her and whispering about her because of, um, the affair she had, uh, you know, 47, 48 years ago. But that wasn't it. Uh, it was because of the awful things that my dad had said and uh, her just standing by and not stopping it from happening or um, trying to fix it afterwards. So she moved. They moved. They moved about uh, maybe 40 minutes away, 35, 40 minutes away to a gated community. She wanted to make a new group of friends, which was fine. My brother also moved during this time, coincidentally, to a gated community. Um, so, um, my, I didn't move. My sister didn't move. I didn't talk to my sister during this time either. Um, as a side story that happened during this time in October, what brought me back together or side on a side back in track was I work uh, part time and my job, I, I worked part time for the same company for almost five years and they brought in, uh, they bring things in uh, on site and they had sent October is um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I got an email saying that they were going to bring what they call a mom bus um, on site in downtown. I live in Phoenix area and they it's a bus that does free mammograms. I uh, was 46 at the time no symptoms, never had problems. I get my yearly checkups. Um, so 
uh, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, but I have insurance, you know, all that fun stuff. But my, uh, I saw the email, like I said, I work out of my house, so, um, I don't go out uh, on site to my office very often. So when I saw the email, I was like, you know, it'll give me a chance to go down and see my coworkers that I don't see often. And, um, and I can get a free mammogram. Why not? So I, you still have to call and make an appointment. So I called, I made an appointment. I got the last spot, um, less appointment that they had available. So I, this was in October. Um, I believe it's like the third week in October. It's a little fuzzy. Uh, I went for my mammogram in the bus, went and visited my coworkers. Uh, I, they send the results to your primary doctor. So I got a call in November, uh, from my primary doctor saying she wanted to see me. And then I got another call from my primary doctor because I didn't return the phone call right away saying she wanted to see me again. Um, and that it was very important that I call back. So I call back and I make an appointment. I go down and see her and she says they found something on my mammogram, but nothing to worry about nothing to worry about um that they found a large mass on my left breast um and that it was probably benign because i was young i didn't have any symptoms no pain no you know nothing else really happening um no other signs uh Nothing to worry about. They were going to run more tests. I was going to get a biopsy, stuff like that. She followed, gave me a doctor to follow up with. So I left that office with referrals, more appointments, you know, fun stuff. Um, but I remember leaving that office with a card in my hand. And looking at that card sitting in my car, in the card, she kept saying breast specialist. And I remember looking at the card, in the, when I got in the car, and the card had, uh, it said cancer center on it. And I remember thinking to myself, she said breast specialist. She didn't say anything about cancer. Cancer? What the hell? That was never mentioned. Cancer. She kept saying, don't worry. It's probably benign. There's no, you know, we really don't think there's anything to worry about. Um, that was never mentioned. That's a scary ass word. Um, I'm really young. I felt young anyways, or I did. Um, nobody in my family has cancer or has had cancer. My mom. I didn't know too much anymore. I wasn't connected to my biological father's family. I just found out all that crap. So I didn't know, delve into that history anymore. So I did, wasn't sure about them, about the cancer side um I was I was at a loss um I was really just trying to compartmentalize everything and thinking th 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 I was shutting down I was like there's no way I have cancer she said there's nothing to worry about there's nothing to worry about I did all the tests I was supposed to do set up my appointments went for my biopsy went for another biopsy uh, this is in November. Um, everything went really fast. All of a sudden, everything was happening super fast. Uh, I would say, I think it was the second week in October or November. All of a sudden, I'm sitting in 
um, the can this cancer institute with my I called my mother. Told her what was happening. I asked her to go with me. It was uncomfortable. But she she wanted to come. I wanted my mom there. I wanted my mom there. My mom, my husband, and my daughter. So I have my mom, my husband, my daughter in the doctor's office in the, at the cancer place with the oncologist. And he is going over my results. And he tells me I have invasive ductal carcinoma. Um, he tells me I have stage two breast cancer that it is in my, um, basically in my armpit as well. Um, and he goes over all my options, tells me they're going to do a mastectomy. Um, I'm going to go through all the chemo, the radiation tells me, you know, all the odds I'm HER2 positive tells me what that means. I'm supposed to get start chemo the day after Thanksgiving. I soak it all in. We're shocked. All of us are shocked, but we're okay because this doctor seems to know what he's talking about. I go and get my port put in. So this is a port. In case you don't know what a port is, I don't know if you can see it. It's underneath my skin. They put a tube, direct access to your main vein. That's where you get your chemo from. Fun stuff. So, because chemo, the drugs are so strong, that they'll ruin your veins. So you don't get like an IV. They put it right into my chest. So I go to surgery to get my port put in. And they put that in to day surgery. It's not like... Uh, you know, you're not in the hospital for a week or anything. Get my port put in. Get all ready. Um, I go the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, my friends all rally around. I have a wonderful, amazing group of friends. They really are great. Um, I wouldn't be able to make it without them behind me. They gather, you know, uh, just amazing stuff for me to help get me through this. Um, you know, they get me crossword puzzles, you know, hats, cozy socks, you know, just scribbly things to do when I'm in chemo, you know, just to keep me occupied and, you know, say, socks that say screw cancer. I mean, just, they're amazing. They're just amazing. My sister-in-law... Amazing. Just, I, I can't even give you enough uh, shout outs to how amazing my friends and my sister-in-law have been. So, they're everything I wish my mother was, but she's not. But I still want my mom. Deep down, I still want my mother. Because who doesn't want their mom with them supporting them? Still not talking to my father at this time, though. Um, the day after Thanksgiving comes, uh, bright and early we go, me and my husband, we pack my goodie bag with snacks, stuff to do, um, we go, 8 a.m. we show up at the Cancer Institute to get my chemotherapy, my first day of chemotherapy, and... I knew something was wrong because we walked in. I've never gotten chemo, mind you. This is the first time. We walk in. And the nurse has this uh, look on her face. Not happy, not good morning, not how are you. Um, it's a very sullen look. And she says, hi, um, I have a room for you. A, a room? I didn't really understand what was happening. 
Uh, she says, yeah, the doctor wants to review some stuff with you before you begin. So she takes me and my husband into a room. We wait for my doctor to come in. He walks in the room. He sits down. He's very sullen, very quiet. And he says, some more tests have come back. And I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but um, we've upgraded you from stage two to stage four cancer. I look at him and I say, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? He says, the cancer is through your whole body. It's in your liver. It's in your spinal cord or spinal, your spinal bone. I'm sorry, your spinal backbone, not my cord. It's in your shoulder blades. It's in your hips. It's in your sternum. It's in your ribs. It's in your thigh bones. It's everywhere. Then he says, aren't you tired? You have to be exhausted. You must be exhausted. Because anybody who has cancer that advanced must be extremely tired. How do you answer that question? Fuck yeah, I'm tired. Tired all the time. My husband hasn't said anything. He's not even talking right now. I can tell. He's like, we're, we're just soaking, like, what questions do you even ask right then? I ask him how long I have to live. He says I have six months to a year to live. Six months to a year. That doesn't work. For me. Six months to a year. Are you fucking kidding me? Then he says, Don't worry, I'll make you comfortable before you pass. I said, I asked him, what about the surgery? The mastectomy, the chemo, nothing? We're not, are, are we still doing that today? He said, it, there's no point. There's no point in doing the mastectomy because we only do that to stop the cancer from spreading. And it's already spread through your whole body. And the chemo will only make you sick and why make your end of life miserable and he starts to cry and he says I'm sorry don't worry you'll be comfortable and he hands me a prescription for Percocet he hands me a prescription for Percocet. My shoulder was bothering me. I couldn't lift my left arm up very high and bring it down. 
And now I know it's because I had a tumor on my left shoulder. I take the prescription. My husband and I walk to the car. And we hyperventilated cried in our car for about 10 to 15 minutes. Before I turned and looked at my husband and I said, we will never see that doctor again. And I never have gone back to him again. Not going to tell me I'm not going to live. tell you the rest soon. Make sure you guys subscribe so you can hear the rest. Talk to y'all soon.